Hey, Shalom. I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honors to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, salutations, and blessings to the elect who firmly believe on Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. Now, the title of this lesson is going to be I, I'm Afraid, but I'm Afraid if I don't preach. I'm Afraid. But I'm afraid if I don't preach, you know, and that's the only thing we as Hebrew Israelites, ministers of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh should be afraid of. The only thing we should be afraid of is to not teach this word. It is correction is what will happen to us if we don't preach this word. That's the only thing that we should be afraid of when it comes to the time of Jacob's trouble. We shouldn't be afraid when it comes time to meet our oppressor and meet the face of our enemy we should not be afraid when it comes time to the the famine and the drought the pestilence the plague the race wars we shall not be afraid man you know because real quick what happens when you are afraid let's get it let's get it by way of scripture Let's get it by way of scripture. I believe it's wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 17, I believe it's 12. That's right. All right, so wisdom of Solomon chapter 17, verse 12. It says, For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succorers which reason offereth. That's why we shouldn't be afraid of the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, because at the time of Jacob's trouble is when we're going to need our succorer the most. During our hour of temptation, that's when we're going to need our succorer the most. You know, so if you're afraid and you're fearful and within that time, you're betraying the help of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You essentially don't believe that he's going to pull through for you. Now, of course, we've never been, we're, we're never... We, we've never entertained the situation as such as Jacob's trouble. So, of course, you're going to have some feeling within you or a sense of doubt, if you will. However, that's Satan. You know, Yahweh Shai felt those emotions. But at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai pulled through it. At the end of the day, Yahweh Shai had faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You know, ultimately, he had faith. Though it was that inkling of doubt, you know, which was Satan in the mist. So we got to understand that all of these emotions will, you know, process through our mind. But it's about at the end of that thought pattern that you maintain your faith. You know. The scriptures tell us he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. So it's all about the ending. You know, the scriptures say better is the end of a thing than the beginning. So it doesn't matter what your thought process is in the beginning and in the midst. It matters what happens in the end of that thought pattern and the end of that thought process. So let me read that again. It says, for fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succorers, which reason offereth. You know, it says, and the expectation from within being less counteth the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. And that's heavy, man. And the expectation from within being less. So what's your expectation? That you're going to be taken by your oppressor? Or you're going to be, or you're going to overcome your oppressor through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You know? It's all about what's in you. You know? Because the enemy, the true enemy is within yourself. You understand? The true enemy is within yourself. And the outside enemy can't do a goddamn thing. The outside enemy can't do nothing but what the Heavenly Father allow him to do. You know? So if you're wired to believe that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to deliver you from the said perils, can't nothing touch you, man. Can't nothing prevail over you. You know? And that's the beauty of this truth and that's the beauty of faith. You know, going back 
to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me start at verse 16. It says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. That's right. We shouldn't glory, you know, carnally. We shouldn't glory in ourselves. We should glory in the fact that we know Yahweh Bashem Yahushua and we have this word. It says, for necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's right. This death and destruction is going to fall upon you if you don't preach the gospel, man. That's why you should be afraid. That's the only reason why you should be afraid is if you don't pre preach the gospel, if you don't teach, if you don't warn, if you don't rebuke, if you don't condemn with all long suffering in season and out of season. You should be afraid if you're not teaching 100 percent truth. You should be afraid if you're not telling the world that the RFID microchip is the mark of the beast or the Gentiles or the Israelite foreigners that the Apostle Paul went to. You know, or the Lord only died for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. You should be afraid if you're not teaching these things. Because if, in turn, what's going to happen, the Lord is going to destroy you in the fashion that he best deems fit. You know, and the scriptures tell us it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power. That's what you should be afraid of. But when it comes to our enemies, when it comes to Jacob's trouble, fuck all that. We ought not to be afraid. It says, for if, for if I do this willingly, I have a reward. You got to have a willful spirit. This thing can't be a burden unto you. The Lord is going to bless us reward, man. Rewards that we don't even deserve. You know, because we still in this flesh. We still go off, man. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. It says, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Hamashiach without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. And that's another thing you don't want to do. You don't want to abuse your power, you know, within the gospel. Because we're all expendable. You know, the Lord don't need near one of us. You know, however, the Lord, however, the Lord prophesied, and the Lord wired certain men they go, that they're going to manner and conduct themselves in a proper manner. You know, in the proper manner. It says, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. You know, because that's what you want to do within this faith. While we, while we sigh and cry for the abomination that be done in the midst thereof, we have made ourselves servants, you know unto men seeking learning you know the scriptures also tell us for i labor not for myself but all those that seek learning you know for all those that seek wisdom so what we're servants unto you you know when yahweh shai you know washed wash the feet of the disciples that was a case of an example of him being servants of him being in the position that he is and also being a servant because he's serving the brotherhood what is he serving them? The truth. You know? And when we make ourselves servants, we gain the more as in the, the elect being sealed. You know? The more you make yourself a servant, the more the elect gets sealed and the quicker we get the hell out of here. It says, And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, because the Apostle Paul's office was to go to the Gentiles. But you had Jews in a land that that didn't accept Yahweh Shai. So the purpose was for the Apostle Paul to win the Jews in the land's favor into believing Yahweh Shai. It says, To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. It says, To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to the Most High, but under, but under the law to Hamashiach, that I might gain them that are without the law. Right, because the Israelite foreigners had the heathenistic mind frame. You know, they were bald. You know, they were probably shaven. They weren't wearing the proper attire. You know, they didn't take hold of the Sabbaths. They didn't rehearse the holy days. You know, so here it is. That's what the Apostle Paul went to. You know, here it is. They accept Yahweh Shai, but now, after accepting Yahweh Shai, it's time to, you know, rehearse the righteous acts. You know, acknowledge and take hold of the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, so it says to the weak became I as weak 
that I might gain the weak. I made I am made all things to all men, that I might be all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. You know, you got to be in a race in order to obtain the prize. You got to be out there on the highways and byways in order to obtain the prize. I'm afraid of not receiving that prize. You want to put yourself in a position to have the hope for salvation. Now, if you're watching from the bleachers, you ain't got no hope, man. You ain't got no chance to receiving that crown. That's why you shouldn't tarry when serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You shouldn't tarry when serving the Lord. Just get up and go. You know, now the order came out to where no uh, Great Millstone isn't accepting any more members. You know? However, that shouldn't stop you from teaching this word. Yeah, you still give your double honors. Yeah, you should still pay your tights. You know, because you're learning from these men. You know, if you got the funds to do so. You know. Go out there and teach. Feed the flock. You know, it says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. You know? So you got a lot of people out here, you know, they want to make the Super Bowl. They want to go to the NBA championship. They want to go to the, the MLB championships. You know, you want to win certain titles in boxing and things of that nature for a corruptible crown. To be seen of men. To have carnal glory. But we're doing it for an incorruptible crown. You know, here it is. A champion could win a belt. And the next fight, that belt could be taken away. That's a corruptible crown. You know? But here it is, if we, we sow and toil, you know, by teaching this word, can't nobody take our crown away from us in the kingdom of heaven. You know, can't nobody take our planets away from us from the king, in the kingdom of heaven. You know, here it is, if you, even if you're into real estate, you know, you own some property. They can take your property by way of eminent domain, man. <laughs> you know, or, 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 or even kill you and take the property, you know. Look, Esau got ways around uh, acquiring what he wants, you know? So why put your spirit and energy into this place? Put your spirit and energy into something that doesn't fade away, and that's the kingdom. It says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least in fear of. That's what that means, that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway, you know. So that's that, that's that's the that's that's the only thing we should be afraid of, you know. We should be afraid of not teaching this word, and we should be afraid of, you know, keeping our bodies in subjection to the word of the heavenly Father, you know, and the words that we speak, because you don't want to be considered a hypocrite, you know, within this faith, you know. It's one thing you don't want to be considered, because the Lord could get rid of you, man. The Lord could have mercy on you, or the Lord could get rid of you. You know, but these things are written for a reason. These things are written for a reason. Let me get the next scripture. This is book, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You know? So that's why we shouldn't fear this devil. That's why we shouldn't fear this Edomite. You know? Though we may get caught up in his concentration camps, though we may have to live like a pilgrim and attempt to survive essentially all faith, you know, though he may grab you three, four o'clock in the morning out of your homes, don't fear that devil, man, because he can only kill the body. We live in the spirit, man. We live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, you know, because after they kill the body, they can't go no further. We should be we should fear him that's able to kill the body because the heavenly father's the one giving us Edomite the authority to even put hands on you. You know? We should fear him that got control over the body and the spirit. You know? That's who we should fear. And once he tells us to do something, we ought to do it. And he told us to teach. 
He, he told us to prophesy in season and out of season. You know, it says, and are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father's command. You know, so to the littlest roach, to the littlest bird, to the littlest insect. The heavenly father has to command that thing to be put to death in order for it to be put to death. It says, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You know, why are we more valuable than many sparrows? Because we're teaching this word. You know, we have the understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, the message that the world ought to know. You know, because we're teaching the heathens too. We're teaching them of their condemnation. We're teaching them of their future. You know. Last and final scripture is the book of Proverbs, chapter four, verse twenty-five. Or was it three and twenty-five? Three and twenty-five. This is Proverbs three and twenty-five. It says, "Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken." And that's clear as day, man. Because yeah, fear is gonna uh, uh, fear can come suddenly, but the Lord told us not to be afraid of it. When they busting in your doors in the wee hours of the morning, that's sudden. You know, when there's no food in these supermarkets, it's gonna happen suddenly. But be not afraid of it. You know, the Lord is our confidence. You know, and the Lord's said that He's not gonna allow our foot to be taken. He's not gonna allow us to be oppressed during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Lord said for let me matter of fact, let me get it right quick. <clears throat> so Isaiah sixty six and fifteen. Let's see what it says. Might be sixty See. Yeah, see, Isaiah chapter 65. Let's start at 11. It says, But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore, I will number you to the sword. And that's what's going to happen to the individuals that chose not to preach, to teach the Lord's word. Truthfully, it says, And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. You know, they chose the world, essentially. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord power. Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. You know, so the Lord said we're going to eat, but two thirds is going to be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. So we're going to drink in that time when the Lord declares a famine, the Lord's men. Is going to be taken care of. It says, Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. You know? So those of you who didn't want to get right, you're going to get left, and you're going to howl for vexation of spirit. You're going to be vexed, man, because nothing is going your way. You know? And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord power shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. You know? So that's the difference, man. And that proves that the Lord doesn't love everybody. That's it. You know? So that concludes the title of this lesson. That's why I entitled it. I'm afraid. But I'm afraid if I don't teach or preach or prophesy. It's the only thing we should be afraid of. You know, so with that, I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honors to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, salutations, and blessings to the elect. Shalom.